Jean-Baptiste Colbert, The Rise and Fall of Mercantilism Jean-Baptiste Colbert was an ambitious bourgeois who wanted to put order to the nation's economy during the time of Louis XIV. Louis had learned from quelling the nobles who rose up during the Fronde, and with Colbert's help, deposed Nicolas Fouquet, a wealthy noble from the office of Minister of Finance. He considered the current financial system to be full of maxims of confusion rather than his own maxims of order, and he developed a bureaucracy to create financial order throughout the kingdom. The prevailing economic philosophy of the time was mercantilism. Its core tenet was what Austrian economist Ludwig von Mises later called the Montaigne fallacy, after 16th century French essayist Michel de Montaigne. The idea is that the plight of one man is to the benefit of another, or what is known today as a zero-sum game. There is a fixed amount of resources in the world, and for one man to take some is necessarily for another man to lose some. As Colbert wrote to King Louis XIV in 1669, this state is flourishing not only in itself, but also by the want which it has inflicted upon all the neighboring states. Mercantilism also encouraged stockpiling of bullion so that it can flow into the coffers of the state through taxation. This would not only mean more wealth for France, but necessarily less wealth for its enemies. The universal rule of finances should be always to watch and use every care and all the authority of your majesty to attract money into the kingdom to spread it out into all the provinces so as to pay their taxes. Colbert. A combination of tariffs, taxes, and monopolies were used to promote domestic industry and self-sufficiency for the goal of the greater wealth of France and Louis' government. Colbert manipulated as many legal codes as he could to extract the exorbitant amounts of taxes from nobles and kept his bourgeois monopolist friends exempt. He is famous for saying, The art of taxation consists in so plucking the goose as to obtain the largest amount of feathers with the least amount of hissing. He instituted quality controls on domestic industry. A bolt of cloth an inch too short was stopped at the border and destroyed. Today, French politicians are referred to as colbertism, meaning either they are ensuring higher quality or are ridiculously strict. A highly advanced French navy was necessary to ensure France secured raw goods in the colonies before its competitors, the Dutch and British companies. Tariffs on the import of finished goods were implemented in order to maintain billion within the country. The complex rules of these new regulations and tariffs were an incredible burden to those wishing to conduct in trade. Many merchants, nobles, and other bourgeois cried out that these tariffs and taxes were an encroachment on their civil liberties. Colbert also said, It is simply and solely the abundance of money within a state which makes the difference in its grandeur and power. One thing that made Colbert unusual from other mercantilists were the importance that he gave to art and other intellectual pursuits. His goal for this was to ensure that art only existed to glorify the king and his realm. He monopolized art and intellect into government-funded academies. In this painting, he is presenting the members of the Royal Academy of Sciences to Louis XIV. During Colbert's term, 80 million livres were spent on royal edifices and 40 million on the Palace of Versailles. He also monopolized theater and removed French ballet in favor for his personal preference, the Italian opera. It is not unreasonable to assume that Colbert had a personal interest in Louis' success and glorification, as by the end of his life, he had amassed 10 million livres worth of land, titles, and gold through gratification from the king. Mercantilism, like most economic policy, eventually did have its opponents. Economists of the 18th and 19th century vehemently opposed mercantilism in favor of free trade and markets. The Scottish economist Adam Smith famously wrote in The Wealth of Nations, 1776, that mercantilism denied surplus goods from being sold and restricted access to low-cost foreign goods. His idea of the division of labor is that when individual workers are allowed to specialize in a part of the production process, more of a good can be produced and a nation can be productively efficient. David Ricardo developed the idea of comparative advantage, the diametric opposite of the mercantilist view on trade. Comparative advantage states that the person or nation that has the lowest costs in producing a good should be the one that produces it, and then both nations may trade to their mutual advantage. He used this idea to fight protectionist corn laws in Britain. To summarize in five points, 